Alright guys, so let's get started. We are looking at section 3-2 today. So for the past couple of days, we have been focusing on solving systems of equations by graphing. So what we've been doing is classifying a system as one of three types. It could be independent, intersecting with one solution. It could be dependent, which meant that the lines were coinciding and that you had infinitely many solutions. Or it was inconsistent, which meant that the lines were parallel and there were no solutions. So what we're gonna do today is take that same idea, that same focus, those same concepts, but we're going to apply them to solving systems using algebra. So as part of the warm-up, we're just going to go over some old terminology and words that we hopefully remember from our past days. So it says find the additive inverse of each term. So additive means the number that you can add to it and get zero. Inverse means opposite in this case. So the additive inverse of four is negative four. The additive inverse of negative x would then be positive x. 5x would be negative 5x, and 8y would be negative 8y. And then another part of what we're going to be doing today is substituting. So it says substitute 2y minus 1 in for x in each equation, then solve for y. So basically what that's telling us to do is take x equals 2y minus 1, plug it in for x in each of these problems, and then solve for y. So what I'm doing when I plug in that 2y minus 1 for x is I am re-looking at this equation, but I'm looking at it in a way now that I have all of the same variable. All of my variables are y's. So 2y plus 2y is 4y. Negative 1 equals 3. We're going to add 1 to the opposite side. Divide by 4 and we get y equals 1. Over here, we're going to do the same thing. So you have y minus 2. You replace x with 2y minus 1 equals 8. We're going to distribute the negative 2 in. Combine like terms. Divide by negative 3. And you get y equals negative 2. And then for number 7, we have 2y plus 3x equals negative 5. So what we're going to do is take that same idea substitute in so we have 2y 
plus 3 times 2y minus 1 equals negative 5. Sorry, I have a child trying to get into the Zoom saying the link is missing. So distribute your 3, and we have 2y plus 6y minus 3 equals negative 5. 2y plus 6y is 8y minus 3 equals negative 5. Add over your 3 and we get 8y equals negative 2. So y equals negative 1 fourth. Okay, any questions on any of those? So as part of the warm up, like I said, we're looking at skills that are going to be utilized in this unit. So we're going to be using the additive inverse. We're going to be using substitution. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're going to have two equations and we're either going to substitute them or eliminate them. So there are two equations that you can use to solve systems of equations. So one method, and the method we're gonna focus on today is called substitution. So we are looking at substitution today. We'll look at elimination tomorrow. So the substitution method is similar to the second part of the warm-up. What we're going to do is look at our equation. So we're going to focus in this case on number one. And we're going to look for any of the variables to have a value or coefficient of one. So when I look at example one, I have an x, a 3y, a negative 2x, a 4y. So I'm going to pick the coefficient that is one. So I'm going to pick the x. And what I'm going to do is pick the x from the top equation to solve for. So I'm going to take that top equation. And I'm going to solve for x. By subtracting 3y to the other side. So now I have that x equals 12 minus 3y. I've done nothing to change the problem. I have simply rearranged the terms to help me in a new way. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that x equals 12 minus 3y, and we're going to substitute it into the other equation. So you're going to solve one of the equations for a variable, and then you're going to substitute what you solve for in to the other equation. So what I'm going to do is replace the x in the second equation with 12 minus 3y. And just like in the warm-up now, my equation is in terms of one variable instead of two. And 
I'm going to distribute and combine like terms. And we get y equals 3.3. And then what we're going to do is solving for y alone is no longer sufficient. We want to know what both variables are. So we're going to go back to that original problem. We're going to say x plus 3 plugging in y now. So 3.3 equals 12. So 3 times 3.3 .3 is 9.9. .9. So you're going to have x equals 12 minus 9.9. .9. Or that x is equal to 2.1. And just like our graphing, what that means is that the point of intersection is 2.1 comma 3.3. So this is kind of like where our graphs crossed each other. If I graphed that, they would hit at that point of intersection. Number two. So once again, what you want to do is find the variable that has a coefficient of 1. So we're not going to use the top equation at all. And just because we haven't done it yet, let's use and solve for y in number 2. So we'll subtract over x. And we get y equals negative 12 minus x. And then what we're going to do is replace y in the top equation with negative 12 minus x. And then we're going to solve for x. So we get x equals negative 6. We're going to plug that back in. And we get y is negative 6 as well. All right, number three. Solving for y, because that's the coefficient that has a power of one. I'm just going to add y to the other side because it's easier than subtracting 3x and dividing by a negative 1. So I get 3x equals y. But again, we're going to substitute or replace the y with 3x. So I get 4x plus 3. 
times 3x equals 26. So then you get 4x plus 9x equals 26. 4 plus 9 is 13x. Divide by 13. And you get x equals 2. Plugging that back in. 3 times 2 minus y equals 0. Add your y over, multiply 3 times 2, and we get y equals 6. Systems of equations are really, really useful with word problems. Oftentimes when you see word problems, they're involving systems of equations because they are such an easy way to apply real world tasks. So we have a pizza shop and basically what they have are two different deals. The first deal says a soda and two slices of pizza cost $10.25. The second deal is a soda and four slices of pizza for $8.75. And then it says find the cost of each item. So basically what we want to do is set up two equations and determine if the cost per item is the same for each. So we will call soda variable s and pizza variable p. So we have one soda plus two pizzas equals 10.25. And then we have one soda plus four pizzas is 1875. So we're going to want to solve for s simply because it has a coefficient of 1. So we'll say that soda equals 10.25 minus 2p and then we're going to replace soda in equation 2 with that problem. So we'll combine like terms. So you get 10.25 plus 2p equals 18.75. I'm going to subtract 10.25 from both sides. Divide by 2. And I see that the pizza turns out to be about $4.25 a slice. That better be one huge slice of pizza. Taking that price and plugging it back in, I have 1s plus 2 times 4.25 plus 10.25. So we have S plus 8.5 equals 10.25, or S equals 10.25 minus 8.5, which is $1.75.
Um, so this equation for word problems seems a little outdated because we don't really have CDs so much anymore. Everything is all on our phones, but it says you can buy a CD at the local store for $15.49. You can buy them at an online store for $13.99. However, if you buy it online, you have to pay for shipping. So it's an additional $6. Find the number of CDs that you can buy for the same amount at the two stores. So basically we wanna know when will it cost me the same to buy CDs online with shipping as opposed to going in store? So we'll say that store one is equal to 15.49 times C, where C represents the number of CDs. And then you have store two which is the online store, which is $13.99 per CD plus $6 to ship. So again, it says find the number of CDs that you can buy for the same amount at the two stores. So I wanna know when the cost at store one is equal to the cost at store two. So I'm going to substitute this equation in for store. And then solve for the number of CDs where the cost will be the same. So we'll get all of the same variable on one side. So 15.49 minus 13.99 is equal to 1.5. And then we need to get our variable alone, so we'll divide 6 by 1.5. and we get four. So what that means is that if I purchase four CDs, the cost in store and online will be the same. The cost would be, you could do either equation, But the cost for four CDs from either store would be 92.94. Okay, so your homework is that next page in our notes packet. So it's also uploaded onto Fusion. So you can use the remaining like 10, 15 minutes of class time to get started on that. All homeworks are supposed to be uploaded um, for the three, two lessons by now. And then this homework and tomorrow's homework will be due on Friday.